Hey guys, it's Christine, also known as Ivy Winter. Thank you for joining me for another Disney video. Today's video is spawned out of some news that came out a couple of weeks ago and a lot of tweets that came my way asking me my thoughts on the annual pass holder price change that happened recently and if I am going to get a new annual pass. A lot of people know that I let mine lapse in January with the thought that I was going to get a new one in the fall because I knew I wasn't really going down again for a while. And I assumed that, you know, the price would be similar to what it was, which was after tax, like, somewhere like about 800 or so dollars, almost $900 for the Platinum Annual Pass, which is pretty much the only one I can get because I'm not a Florida resident. So that was my original plan, was going to probably go down and see Rob and hang out and go to the parks in like September or October and then get a new Annual Pass. And then surprise, Disney said, we are raising the prices on all of our Annual Passes and the most on the Platinum Pass and now it is well over a thousand dollars to get. So basically the actual numbers are went from $894. This is for the platinum, not the platinum plus that includes uh, you know, the water parks. But went from $894 to $1,119. A huge, huge jump of $225. That is crazy. It happened overnight and I think that that was really the big shock for a lot of people and why a lot of people got really upset. It kind of came sooner than a lot of people thought and all of a sudden everything price-wise went up and it really did get me second guessing on if I wanted to get another annual pass, especially being an out-of-stater because you know, it's expensive enough for Florida residents and you know, they do at least have the uh, payment plan and their annual pass is a bit cheaper than the Platinum Pass to begin with. But when you are just getting the Platinum Pass and you're out of state, you don't get any sort of payment plan. You're paying this huge amount of money up front and then you have to think about things like flights and hotel and all of that, right? So, you know, the cost just to get to Florida is another additional cost on top of already what this annual pass is. And now the number of days that you need to go to the parks to make the annual pass worth it also increases. So if you say, if you round it to about $1,100, and let's say a park day is 125 bucks. I know it changes depending on the season and all of that, but let's just say it's about that. You're looking at just about nine park days in order to break even on this annual pass. So really, you'd want to have more within a year for it to be worth it. Now, will that be the case for me? Likely, yes. I mean, that that's essentially making sure that I have more than one five-day trip or multiple, you know, three to four-day trips and I'm in a fortunate situation where because I'm really good friends with Rob and he now lives down there, I have a place to stay. That really offsets the cost of getting this annual pass for me because that eliminates hotel costs. Even if I, even if I just stay with him a couple of days and then do a hotel a couple of days, that's saving me the couple hundred dollars that this annual pass cost has uh, risen, right? And that's over multiple trips. So really, you know, I'm, I'm saving more than that. If it were not for that, honestly, I don't know if I would even consider getting this annual pass in the future because that on top of hotel, on top of flights, it just becomes a very, very expensive investment. And I think part of the reason why they did this was because of Galaxy's Edge opening. Obviously they feel like they can bump up the price because it's worth it, you're getting more. I, and obviously they think the popularity of Star Wars is going to be worth it enough to bump up that price that much. They think that this is, you know, Galaxy's Edge is giving enough that it is worth bumping up this price over $200. And not only that, but I think this theory of trying to cut back on annual pass holders might be True. I know that sounds weird because Disney, you would think, well, they just want to make their money, so they want people to keep buying annual passes. But look at the crowds. I mean, all year round, it's pretty crazy, and I think a lot of that has to do with annual pass holders. And it's not just platinum pass holders, obviously, Florida resident pass holders as well. But I almost do think that they're trying to make it a little bit out of reach for some people because then that would make them instead just decide to do that one or two trips a year, if that, and just buy those tickets outright. 
And when you have an annual pass, you kind of justify wanting to make the most out of it. So you probably make more trips down, thus crowds are going up. I know that sounds like a little bit of a crazy conspiracy theory, but It'd be really interesting to see if because these prices rose and some people are going to say, no, that's it, I'm out, this is too much for me, that if that helps bring crowds down a little bit and kind of almost solves Disney's problem of people complaining that it's just crowded all the time. I know that sounds a little wacky, but it could be very well true. I think that you are going to see a lot of people jumping ship on this because it's all about what you think Disney is worth, right? So for me, having these four parks and having Galaxy's Edge right now is worth it. And having people that I go see when I'm down there is worth it. Not just Rob, but I have cast member friends and all of that. So that is the draw for me to keep going back. But I can 100% see why someone might look at Universal and say, well, their annual pass is like, what? It's like a little over $300. And even though it's only two parks, that's still a way better deal. Maybe we just wanna do that. Especially if you are a family of four or five. I mean, just imagine trying to get annual passes for a family of four. You're looking at $5,000. It's a lot of money. So, you know, my situation I recognize is very unique in that I am right now a solo traveler and have the people down there that can help me offset the price. But if it wasn't for that, I mean, I, I, I'm still, I'm still balking at spending that money. I might actually end up buying a smaller ticket and then going and upgrading because that's one of the little loopholes for instead of spending the whole amount at once, you could buy like a five day ticket for however much that might be, you know, a little over $500 or so and then decide when you go down there to upgrade to an annual pass, and then you're only gonna pay the difference. So it's almost like making your own little payment plan, even though it's only in two payments. And that might be something that I do just to make this a little bit easier. But, you know, I, I admit that as the years go on and as the prices go up, there is gonna be a point where I get priced out. When that is, I'm not really sure yet, but I totally understand and sympathize with a lot of people who are just maybe deciding that an annual pass just doesn't work for them anymore. So those are just my thoughts. A lot of people are asking me, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna get a new one? How do you feel about all of this? And and I mean, I, I'm just curious to see what the thinking is from Disney's side. I understand that Galaxy's Edge is probably the outward argument, but I think there's other things at play here. Um, and you know, I feel bad for the people who are starting to feel like they just can't afford it anymore. It sucks to feel that way about one of your favorite vacation places. You know, I would never tell somebody, like a lot of people were saying like, oh, well then just find a different place to vacation. And look, I vacation all over the place. I don't just go to Disney, but when it's somewhere that you really love and you really want to go to, and financially you start to feel like you can't anymore, I definitely sympathize with that. So, um, you know, it's just gonna be really interesting to see how this plays out in terms of sales for annual passes through the next year or so. Anyway, those are my thoughts. It was more just a, you know, spin it out there. Not really, didn't really like pre-think this through or anything, but just wanted to give you my honest feelings about the whole annual pass thing. I would like to know in the comments below, uh, did you renew an annual pass? Did you manage to grab one before the prices went up? If not, are you gonna get a new one? Um, how is this affecting you financially and the decisions that you're making for vacations? I'd really like to know. I know this is a very hot topic and I know I'm a little late talking about it, but you know, I just wanted to like kind of gather my thoughts on it first before putting a video out about it. Um, so I would love to know your thoughts about this in the comments below. If you like this video, then like it. If you like me, you should subscribe because I make videos every single week. And I really love uh, just having these open honest conversations with you guys about Disney because sometimes it's not all pixie dust. So we should talk about those things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day.